Hello everyone and welcome to an Easterly video. Now obviously there's no face cam for this but I just really wanted to get this video out as soon as possible. Uh, so recently there has been a vulnerability in WhatsApp. Well WhatsApp application specifically on Windows. And this vulnerability as of recording today is 30th of July. Uh, it's, it still exists. This article was written off July 27, 2024. And I'm just going to showcase a few things as to how you can actually uh, you know, see it in working and how you can actually try it out yourself. Obviously, everything shown in this video, the disclaimer would be it's for educational purposes. So make sure that you don't actually kind of misuse it. So uh, basically what is happening is in the WhatsApp web, uh, sorry, not the WhatsApp web, but the WhatsApp application on Windows, the official application that is, you know, distributed through Windows Store, Certain, uh, certain, for example, applications would just run. Certain files, uh, you know, would just directly run. So, for example, here is an app uh, example of calc.exe. Now, the thing is, calc.exe would not run. Like, it would just say save fail. So, you would have to, you know, click on save as, and then you'd have to go through the whole thing, so on and so forth. But the thing is, if you were to use a Python file, it would actually work. What am I talking about? So let me showcase it on Windows. So right now I have my MacBook, so I have remoted into a, a Windows desktop that I have. Please excuse the internet connection. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take it on the side and the connection is really, really, really horrible. Wait, wait a second. Okay, please do not ask me how long it actually took to do that. Uh, as you can see, the resolution is quite uh, horrible, but this is what we have to work with because the internet connection is kind of wonky on my remote machine. Now here you can see I have WhatsApp over here. So if I actually go into settings and if I go into help, you can see that it's the latest version of WhatsApp that is available to us at the moment. And I can even, for example, try to show it to you uh, if I go to the Windows Store. And in the Windows Store, if I search on WhatsApp, it will give me uh, that, hey, there are no updates. This is the latest version that is available. So yeah, this is what it is. I just installed it. I'm not going to do it again because, as I said, internet is very horrible. Now, what I'll do is I have a sublime text open over here. And I'm just going to create a very, very, very basic Python script. And you can notice it's actually PYZ. And this is stored on desktop. So it's a Python file, but it's in a zipped format. So when you double click on it, it's just supposed to run. So if I just do hello world over here, and if I just, uh, let's just try to save it. Okay. And let's minimize this. And this is the file over here. And let's try to get out of this window. What I'm going to do is I'm going to try to send it to myself. So imagine someone sends you this file. So I maybe got this file in a chat or something. And let's say I got this file. The moment, now if it was an exe file, it wouldn't work. So let's actually try to, uh, you know, do it with a shortcut or something. So let's just take the arc shortcut that I have over here. And let's try to send it if it works. Oh, I think it's not going to let me do that. Uh, let's actually... Uh, you know, go into C drive, go into program. Uh, let's let, yeah, let's try to do that. Why not? Let's go to Google. Do we have any exe file that we can grab right now? Let's try to grab this one. Okay, so we have this exe file. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab it and I'm going to try to send it uh, to myself once again. Now, when I do that, and if I, if I uh, try to click on open, it's going to give me a warning. Like you can see there's a notification. And the notification says saved fail, like it did not work. But if I try to do the same thing with Python files, if I click on open, it, something happened. You, you saw that dialog box, right? Something happened and something is happening. And if you see for a second, it's I think it's I, I believe it's still printing hello world. So how about we try to keep that dialog box on the screen? So let's just try to do a very simple input command. So we can make sure that the dialog box stays on the screen for a while. Let's send it, send the file again. And let's try to open the file. So you can see it actually opens up command prompt, like it's actually running code without saving the file. All the person needs to do is just click on open. How many times you're going to get a file on, like, you know, let's say your Windows computer and you just click on open without thinking. Like you might not know that the file might just execute. And that's really a very, very, very big deal. Now, what nefarious things can we actually do with it? Well, there are many. So for starters, for example, what I can do is on my computer, uh, I can, or the, once again, on my MacBook, I can try to create a script. I already have a script ready. Uh, so this is what the script looks like. It's a very simple one. 
I'm just uh, importing uh, requests and then I'm sending like a link to this webhook. So let's actually try to update the webhook. So let's just say webhook dot site. And yeah, we already have like this site running. That should be fine. So yeah, you guys can already see I was testing out a few things. Let's just, you know, pretend they were not there. And let's just go back to here. And so for example, if I were to run this, if I run it on my MacBook, uh, what's going to happen is, uh, oh, I'm trying to run a PYZ file. My bad. Let's go to terminal very quickly and let's change the market. Okay. And let's just uh, open up that file instead. Okay. Now what we're going to do is we're going to write Python and uh, sure. Mark.py. And when I run it, it's going to say that, hey, uh, something went wrong. Like it, it tried to decode something. Uh, doesn't matter. There was some sort of an exception. We really don't care about it as long as we are getting the post request over here. Then we did get the post request. You can see the IP address and all of that stuff. Sure, this is interesting. Okay, this is something that you can all uh, technically already do. So what I'm going to do is I'll take all of this code. Uh, let's try to copy the code, and I'll try to open up my remote desktop once again, uh, praying that it doesn't crash. And let's just try to paste it over here. So yeah, I think the paste worked fine. Let's just save it. And uh, because I have universal clipboard uh, running, that's why the paste worked. So now if I paste it over here, and if I send it, and let's say someone sends this file to you. Okay, it's a very, very, very basic webhook. If I click on open, let's let's try to do it side by side. So if I put it, let's just you know hide the remote desktop over here. So the moment I click open, it's going to actually open up a command window and try to do something. And you can see we got a new post, like we got an actual post request and the message says, hello world. Like in theory, this could say anything and we will we'll actually try that out as well. But you can see, we can see the IP address. And once again, it's a VPN. So don't worry, I didn't dox my search really. Uh, that's completely fine. In theory, this could have been something else, right? Now, one gripe that you guys might have is like, hey, Aman, listen. Every single time you click on open, that that opens a command prompt. And if that opens up, someone might actually figure out what is going wrong. So what I can do is I can actually rename the file that I have over here. And you guys can't really see this. But if I rename, let's just rename it properly. So if I rename it over here, and instead of PYZ, if I write PYZW and hit enter, now it's going to be like, hey, do you want to save it? And I'll be like, yeah, sure. And let's try to actually send that file again to ourselves. So I'm sending that file and now it's there's a W at the end. If I click on open and notice over here, right over here, this once again, uh, let's just remove all the po post requests. And uh, let's just try that again. Let's click on open and notice what happens. There's no command prompt window, but we still got the request. That means the Python code is actually running in the back end and the person doesn't even know. And I might actually click uh, open a few times and we don't even know what is happening and you can see there are a lot of requests on the site now that's genuinely cool what can we do with it well obviously if you actually know what you're doing you can actually go to repshells.com and you can just find yourself a reverse shell for python and once again a lot of times because it's python code running uh windows defender is not going to do much like windows defender is going to be like hey yo chill it's fine uh you know whatever 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 you can technically just run this. I'm not going to do it right now because I'll have to set up like an NGR OK setup and all of that stuff. But you can definitely do that. You can definitely send a reverse shell to someone and just ask them to maybe like open the thing or maybe just stay open it. Now, I know it seems like a stretch, but imagine you send this in a group. I can guarantee you that if there's a group of like 100 people, look at the attack surface. There might be what 10 percentage of the people who will just open it. Now, another real life scenario that I wanted to uh, show to you guys was if you actually uh, go to my, uh, you know, uh, GitHub and one of the repositories that I have, uh, I believe is called something known as machine info OSINT. This is something that I created for my students. So yeah, it says for the students, whatever. Now, if I actually go to this, uh, if I actually run this Python file, so this is the get info Python file. If I actually run it, it just has a web book and it collects a lot of information, uh, you know, about your computer. So it's it's a, it's once again a simple Python file which collects a lot of information about your com uh, computer 
and then it sends it somewhere on the webhook. So let's clear all of, uh, you know, all of the different webhooks. Let's just actually copy and let's try to copy the code. Uh, in fact, I think we can just do it from our MacBook. So once again, imagine uh, I'm just copying the code and uh, imagine I'm sending this to one of my friends. So, okay, let's just go here and replace all of this with the new code. We'll give it a few seconds. Okay, perfect, it worked. And what we'll do is we'll also replace the webhook URL that we have over here because this is once again a very old URL that we are not technically using anymore. So let's just go here, let's just copy and let's just go back here and let's just paste it. Now, once I do that, let's just save the file. Oh, because now technically that's a different file. So I'll just say PYZW. Let's just click on save. Let's replace the old file, it doesn't matter. Now what I'm gonna do is I'll take this file, I'll send it to myself, and now imagine you send this file to someone and they just got the file. They haven't clicked on save. And because they see, oh, it looks like some sort of an assignment or something. And if they click on open, what's gonna happen is in the back end, oh, uh, because I have print statements, I believe that's why the pip output looked like. Uh, but once again, imagine I just remove that, uh, you know, specific pip output. You can directly see, I have a lot of information about that computer. Like I know the local IP, I know the public IP, the host name, what is the processor, what is the architecture, what is the memory. So like it's eight gigs, total space is like 128 gigs. I've used like 70, uh, 67 gigs. Um, what is the username? What is the Python? A directory structure where this was run, a lot of information. Now, obviously the directory structure is uh, empty because we technically ran it from WhatsApp and I'm pretty sure WhatsApp actually stores these files in like some random temp directory or whatever. But this is the point. This is the point that I'm trying to make. You could, in theory, send a lot of different things. In fact, if you go to my GitHub, uh, there will be uh, somewhere, there's like a Telegram command and control center thingy. So yeah, this one. If you actually just take this, and if you just take main.py, and maybe just take the token, and if you put it inside main.py, once again, you can actually just read this. And if you just send that file, to someone on WhatsApp and if they just click open, now you have an actual rack running on the windows and because it's just a Python thing that's running in the backend, the, the Windows Defender is not gonna do much. And yeah, that's basically it. Once again, I'm mentioning two programs. Uh, the links will be in the description for you know uh, my GitHub profile. You can check it out. Uh, I'm not the first person to put this on YouTube. I'm sure there are many, many, many other people. There's an amazing video by John Hammond. I'll try to link it below in the description as well. Check out his video as well. But this is the vulnerability. WhatsApp has not fixed it. I, I, I am not sure. I, I, I personally feel like it's a vulnerability. A lot of people have reported it already. WhatsApp has responded saying that it's kind of, a, well, the classic answer is that, hey, it's a duplicate. They have fixed it, but it's not. The fix isn't here and it still works on all the WhatsApp, uh, you know, Windows applications. So yeah, that's it. Anyway, for this video, uh, if you have any questions, comments, whatever, just drop them down. I'll try to help you out. And I would also suggest we have an amazing community on WhatsApp. We also have a community on Discord. You can join our, join our community with one of the links in the description. And that's it. Thank you for watching. Aman, out.